When I was working recently in London, and it, I was doing a public seminar with George, it occurred to me that, and, and, I, and I realized this from not just this one seminar, but I realized that it was something that happened at most of the seminars, if not all the seminars that I've done. The first day or so, there's a constant question, actually three questions that people have that they keep asking in different ways over and over again. And the three questions are, how do I control my thinking? How do I get the right experience or the right feeling? And how do I do the principles? And everyone keeps asking those questions over and over and over again in different ways. And at some point, something happens and they stop asking those questions and they start having insight. They start understanding the principles. And it's really interesting when they start understanding the principles, I think they realize that it's a journey to just more and more understanding of how there is no right place except what they think what they judge to be right. Like somehow they have this idea that if they have enough understanding, then they're going to hold a position of positive feeling. I don't know, 90% of the time maybe. Or maybe some people think, you know, they'll be perfect and hold this positive state of feeling 100% of the time. And I think that people think that enlightenment means that they're going to be in a positive feeling all of the time. And I, I don't, I, I think that's a misunderstanding that people make up. I mean, I know I made that up. When I first started learning the principles, I thought, wow, if I get my thinking right, get my feeling right, I can have the kind of experiences I want all the time, which is going to be living in the right feeling, the right depth of feeling. And again, it, um, that was just a thought I had about what it meant to be enlightened or what it meant to be, um, have a certain level of understanding about the principles. I mean, I don't, I mean, we live in thought and I don't think that we can control what occurs to us, you know, what we experience. But I think we can understand that that experience is an illusion, and we don't, and we can take it more or less seriously, and we don't have to give it a lot of mind. So instead of, and I think as people go through this journey of understanding, it's it's an evolutionary process, and they just start to to clue in that. It doesn't really ultimately matter what your experience is. It's going to go away if you leave it alone. And the idea that you're supposed to have certain experiences is something that has been made up after the fact. You know? After the fact of the principles, people make up what experiences are right and wrong, what thoughts are good and bad. There's nothing, there's no thought that's true. There's no experience that's true. The only truth itself are the principles. Those are the only things that are true. So people are human and they have, they're going to have their share of up and down, good and bad, experiences they like, experiences they don't like. You know, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about um, people that call themselves crazy, you know, because I actually, I had a client that was saying that and a little disturbed by it, judging yourself about it. And when I was listening to her, I was thinking, well, you know, crazy is just extreme thought. 
That's all it is. It's just extreme thought or intense thought or overwhelming thought. And if you understand that it's still thought, you know, you don't have to be crazy, crazy about, you don't have to be frightened about your crazy thinking. It doesn't have to frighten you. You understand it's just thought. Just it's something that's extreme. So it's helpful. I mean, the more I've been involved in this, the more I start to realize that things I thought and experiences that I've had that I've excluded from the category of thinking have start to become included in that category. <laughs> you know, because what people do is they have these experiences or thoughts they put outside themselves and say, oh, that's not a thought. Like, for example, an urge, you know, an urge for drugs or alcohol or food. They, that's not a thought. An urge is not a thought. And then they all of a sudden go, wait a minute. Maybe it is a thought. And the same with crazy thinking. I think people put crazy thinking outside themselves. and, Well, that's not really thought. That's something other. And whatever you can start to see, whatever experience you include, not intellectually, but include experientially as a part of the product of the principles of just being thought, whatever gets in, included in that category, you get a sense of, oh, okay, oh well, if it's just thought, it can't hurt me. So again, it takes the fear and worry out of life. When you start to see that experiences that you used to see outside that dimension, outside the dimension of thought, oh no, that's included too. And that's a very, very wonderful experience to have. And I think, so again, it's not a place to get to. There's no place to get to with the principles. It's just an evolution of understanding. And I think that the more you understand the less you know, I know I feel that way. The more I understand or think I understand about the principles, the, more I, the less I feel I know. And actually, when I tell people that, they think, oh, that's not such a good experience to not know, but actually it is. It's, again, it's kind of a relief not to have to know. And it makes, it goes to... Um, feeling easier in life, I think. People who feel they're so badly broken by life, um, mm -hmm. past experiences or things, behaviors that they've done to other people, what do you think the hope is for them if they gain this understanding? Well, see, the only reason people feel broken is because they believe their thoughts that they're broken and the feelings that they're broken. And thoughts and feelings can be very dramatic and feel very big and feel overwhelming. I mean, thought's a very powerful thing and, and it can create very powerful experiences that you can believe in. Like I remember one time I was, I was crossing the Rainbow Bridge and I had this thought, wow, I'm such a loser. And it had such a big feeling with it that it literally kind of threw my head back about an inch. So I was like, really? <laughs> huge thought and feeling and and then there was a moment and it, it was another thought right do I believe this do I want to believe this if I believe this I might be going down the wrong way here the wrong thought path and I think that's what happens to people they have really strong thoughts and feelings that can be very disparaging to themselves and believe them and thus they feel broken They'll have thoughts like, I'm a really bad person, or um, I'm a really wrong person. And it's, so it's not that they're broken, it's an illusion. Their thoughts are an illusion that make them feel broken. And see, once they put that together, that it's just their thinking that makes them feel like they're broken, and, they, and that misunderstanding is cleared up, they go, oh, just my thinking, not me. Just my thinking in the moment. 
And I've had many clients that have had that realization. They've come in feeling broken and they went, oh, oh, it's just my thinking that's telling me that. And if I either stop having that thinking or I don't believe in that thinking, I don't take it seriously, I don't feel broken. So it's a very powerful experience to have that insight where you don't feel broken and you realize it's just thought. You know, we can't get out of thought. We live in thought like a fish in water, like fish live in water. We live in thought and our thinking changes and sometimes our thinking has more perspective and sometimes it's in our face. But when we have thoughts of perspective about thoughts, <laughs> right? I suppose that experience is the feeling of having distance. But it's like we can't get out of our, our thinking. Our thinking just is always coming and going. And see, that's the beauty of the understanding is that we don't live in a static flow of thought. Even though sometimes we feel like we do live in a static. Like people will say to me, I'm always depressed. I'm always thinking the same thing. Well, if you talk to a depressed person for a while, you realize that within a range, their feeling goes up and down. Their thinking goes up and down. So they're not in this kind of one position or one thought of depression. It goes up and down. And it's interesting that they don't tend to notice that. They, they think they're just the same. Same thought, same feeling, kind of static, the static space. It's not true. It seems like they forget. Like they'll go up and they'll smile and laugh in a conversation, in a session. And then they go back down, but somehow they remember that, but they don't remember the fact that they went up. So we don't live in it just, we don't live in static thinking. We live in a flow. That's the true nature of the principles is that we flow in thought. We go up and down and all over the place. It's just for some, for some reason, we identify with certain states of mind or certain feelings and we tell ourselves that that's what we feel or think all the time and it's just not true. It's really helpful to point that out to clients, particularly when they come in and say, I'm depressed all the time or I'm anxious all the time. They, they, they pop out of it, but somehow they just don't identify with that. They identify with certain kinds of thinking or certain kinds of feelings. And it's just a misunderstanding that people have that they don't recognize or realize that they're in a flow. And that's the nature of the principles, to live in a flow of thought. Now sometimes we circle, we, have, we, we get into habitual thinking, I mean, we tend to have patterns of thought that come and go, but that's natural and normal. And you can understand those as thought that we identify with, but that doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean that we have to take that so seriously.